Hi everyone, Luke here from Solid State Logic, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the SSL2 Mark II audio interface. What's new, and how to get it set up with your system and get working in your DAW. So following the huge success of SSL's smallest interface duo, the 2 and 2 Plus Mark IIs build upon the foundations of the previous generation, bringing incredible performance from a small bus-powered USB interface, perfect for streamlined pro audio setups or for your first steps into audio music creation. So the SSL2 Mark II is a two-in, two-out bus-powered USB interface for Mac and PC, with two mic pre's and switchable line and high-z inputs for plugging your instruments directly into the interface for recording, and two headphone outputs following the same mix. The SSL2 Mark II features two class-leading preamps, designed specifically for our USB-powered interfaces. Our two-stage design uses a mixture of specially chosen discrete low-noise transistors in combination with ICs, and enables us to design mic pre's with exceptional noise performance and superior gain range, enough to drive any microphone in your studio. And what's more, with the built-in loopback functionality, you can easily record your computer's system audio, perfect for things like streaming, podcasting, or creative audio sampling. The possibilities are endless. And with all these features, the evolution of the Mark II brings with it increased performance with higher dynamic range across all inputs and outputs as well as using the latest 32-bit converters to ensure high-fidelity sound for all of your recordings. And whilst the SSL2 Mark II's 32-bit conversion is designed to be completely transparent, ensuring your audio is pristine and true to source, we can also engage SSL's proprietary 4K mode, a completely analog enhancement feature that takes inspiration from the SL4000 series consoles, bringing life and vibe to boring and sterile sound sources with a forward high frequency boost and subtle harmonic distortion for more edge and mojo directly from the interface. So if you're looking at your first audio interface to begin your recording journey, or you're a seasoned professional looking for a small, portable recording and monitoring solution that shares the same DNA with our larger consoles to throw in your touring bag, the SSL2 Mark II is a perfect tool to bring with you on every audio adventure. When first opening your SSL2 Mark II, carefully fold back the cardboard box lid and you'll find the SSL2 Mark II, the Quick Start Safety Guide, a 1.5 meter USB C to C type cable, and a USB A to C adapter. The type of USB port you have available on your computer will determine if you need to use the included adapter. Newer computers may have C ports, whereas older computers may have type A ports. So if required, please use the included adapter and connect your new interface to your system as appropriate. As the SSL2 Mark II is powered entirely from the computer's USB bus power, the interface requires no external power supply. You'll see when the unit is receiving power correctly, the green USB LED will light up a steady green colour. We recommend for best stability and performance using the included USB cable. Long USB cables, especially 3 meters and above, should be avoided as they tend to suffer from inconsistent performance and are unable to provide steady and reliable power to the unit. Once you're connected up and the power light is showing, it's now time to set up your SSL2 Mark II with your operating system. In the following section, we'll look at setting our new interface up for both Mac and PC, so feel free to skip to the appropriate section to get going. But first, let's get your interface registered and allow access to the incredible suite of bundled software to get you started on your recording journey. By registering your SSL USB audio interface, you'll now have access to an array of exclusive software from us and other industry-leading software companies. We call this bundle the SSL Production Pack, which includes doors, plugins, and a host of other useful software to help make the most of your new interface. So, to register your product, head to solidstatelogic.com forward slash get dash started and follow the on-screen instructions. During the registration process, you'll need to input the serial number of your unit. This can be found on the label on the base of your unit. Once you've completed registration, all of your software content will be available in your logged in user area. You can return to this area at any time by logging back into your SSL account at solidstatelogic.com forward slash login, where you can download the software anytime you're ready. Now we have everything we need, let's get set up with our operating system. So for using your SSL interface with your Mac, you can simply plug in the interface with the provided USB-C type cable and head up to your system settings. And under the sound tab, select your SSL interface for both the input and output device, and away you go. 
Now in your DAW, make sure you also select your SSL interface as your input and output device, or select System Audio to follow the system settings and now you can use your new interface. For more information on using your SSL interface, you can also check out the manual that's located in the download section of the SSL website. Just head to solidstatelogic.com, navigate to the downloads page and then select the SSL2 slash 2 plus mark 2 and there you'll find the user manual to help get you started. For using your SSL interface with your Windows system, we need to download the SSL ASIO slash WDM drivers from the Solid State Logic website. So let's jump over to solidstatelogic.com and head over to the download section, then select your SSL interface, then the drivers for the SSL2 slash 2 plus mark 2 ASIO slash WDM driver. Once downloaded, run the installer, then once complete you'll be all ready to get set up. In the download section, you'll also find the user manual to help you get started and guide you through the installation process in more detail. Once you've installed the USB audio driver required to make the unit operational, you will then have noticed that as part of the installation that the SSL USB control panel will also have been installed onto your computer. This control panel will report details such as what sample rate and buffer size your SSL2 or 2 Plus Mark II is running at. You can adjust both sample rate and buffer settings in the control panel, but you should also be aware that both sample rate and buffer size will be taken control by your DAW when it's opened. One aspect you can control from the SSL USB control panel is the tick box for safe mode on the buffer settings tab. Safe mode defaults to ticked but can be unticked. Unticking safe mode will reduce the overall output latency of your device, which may be useful if you're looking to achieve the lowest possible round trip latency in your recording. However, Unticking this may cause unexpected audio clicks and pops if your system is under strain. Once the drivers are installed, head down to the Audio Settings tab and select your SSL interface as your audio device and now you're ready to jump into your DAW and select your SSL interface as your audio device there too. And now you'll be ready to get recording. Now that we're set up with our operating system, it's now time to configure our interface with our preferred DAW. No matter which DAW you are using, you need to ensure that the SSL2 or 2 Plus Mark II is selected as your audio device in the audio preferences and playback settings. In the following sections, we've demonstrated the process for some of the most popular DAWs, but if your chosen DAW isn't listed in this video, then please refer to your DAW's user guide to see where these options can be found. In Live, head up to the Live Settings tab. Then, when the window opens, on the Audio tab, select the Audio Input and Output devices as your SSL2 Mark II, followed by setting up the Input and Output config settings for them to show up as external routing devices like so. Selecting both the inputs and outputs as both mono and stereo routes will give you full flexibility when routing audio in and out of your session via the interface. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's sample rate and buffer size, remembering that high sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency but at the cost of the system's CPU usage and increase file sizes. So adjust these settings to maximise performance depending on your intended use. When in Logic, head up to the Settings tab, then select the Audio page. Under Devices, select the SSL2 Mark II as your input and output devices and you're good to go. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's buffer size, remembering that higher sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency, but at the cost of system CPU usage and increase file size. So adjust these settings to maximise performance depending on your intended use. When in Pro Tools, head up to your Setup tab, then select Playback Engine. Here, under Devices, you'll be able to select the SSL2 Mark II. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's buffer size, remembering that higher sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency but at the cost of system CPU usage and increase file size. So adjust these settings to maximise performance depending on your intended use. Once you've set this, head over to the I.O. tab in the same setup menu to make sure your inputs, outputs and buses are all aligned with your interface connections and now you're good to go.
So now we're set up in our DAW of choice, let's look at connecting up our gear and get recording. First off, let's look at setting up our monitors. Assuming outputs 1 and 2 are our primary outputs in our DAW, outputs 1 and 2 on the interface will be your main speaker outputs. So let's take a pair of TRS jacks and take the outputs 1 and 2 of the SSL2 Mark II and connect them to the monitor inputs. And now we should hear audio playback from our system and we can control the volume with the large black knob. Whilst we have audio playback, let's look at the headphones. We can connect our headphones using a quarter inch jack connector to the headphone outputs at the bottom right of the interface. At the top, again on the right, we then have the monitor source controls. When we have the monitor mix turned fully clockwise to the USB playback label, the headphone outputs will be a copy of your outputs 1 and 2 and the level control is located here at the bottom right with level controls for the headphones and the monitor level controls. We want this setting when monitoring our system audio, whether that's our DAW output or other applications such as YouTube or your preferred music streaming service. If on the other hand we want to listen to our input source with zero latency, we can move this dial fully counterclockwise to the input label. This now sends the input signal from the input channel directly to the headphones for direct monitoring and we can use the knob to blend the sources, giving us the ability to monitor our inputs in real time alongside our door output. Ideal for overdubbing parts of when you're recording a podcast and want to play back system audio too. Just make sure that when you are directly monitoring your input source that you mute those outputs in the DAW to avoid any doubling in your headphones. You'll notice above the input label on the mix knob we have the stereo switch. This will change the inputs from being sent as a mono source to the headphones, playing equally in both left and right sides, to a stereo signal. So we can now real-time monitor a stereo source using both inputs, or have input source only on our left or right side of our headphones. Now we have our monitoring sorted, let's look at the inputs. As we know, we have two mic pre's, but these can also accept line level sources using the line button at the top of the channel. We can also see we have a plus 48 volt button to add phantom power for active ribbons and condenser microphones, and a high pass filter for removing unwanted bass rumble from sources to clean up recordings. We then have the red gain knob that lets us set the input level for the source, with up to 64 dB of clean gain, more than enough to power even the most delicate ribbon mic or vintage dynamic mic without adding noise. The meter below each channel gives us representation of the input signal, with the red light at the top indicating a clipping mic pre. For optimal recording, look to gain the mic pre till we see an average level of about minus 18 dB, maybe peaking somewhere around minus 12 where the meter will peak the three green lights, with it okay to occasionally flicker into minus 10 dB with the amber LED lighting up and being safe from clipping. Finally, we have the 4K button. Engaging this switch allows us to add some extra analog magic to your input when you need it injecting a combination of high frequency EQ boost together with some finely tuned harmonic distortion to help enhance sounds, inspired by the kind of extra character of the legendary SSL 4000 series console. We also have the option to use the inputs of the front labelled instruments 1 and 2. These are specifically set up for high Z sources such as direct electric guitar or bass. The high Z sets the correct impedance to allow us to record the instruments without an amp and we can utilise amp modelling sims in the box to have greater options of control later on. Once all plugged in, the interface will auto detect the high Z input and auto switch the inputs. So now we've fully covered the controls of your new interface, you should be ready to dive in and get recording. And if you need further assistance, the in-depth user guide is available from solidstatelogic.com forward slash support and will go deeper into all the aspects of the interface as covered here as well as more information on the entire SSL product line. Thank you again for choosing the SSL2 Mark II and keep an eye out for more tips, tricks and tutorial content to help you get the best out of your SSL gear.